Hi all. So today's, well this afternoon's little project is to try and sort out the bump steer. I think bump steer is maybe something I put on my to-do video I did probably about eight or nine months ago and still haven't got around to it. But it's been a job I've been meaning to do for even longer than that. Uh, the guy, a guy friend called Kev who has had one of these exo boosters for about five years and no doubt knows more about them than anyone else, certainly more than I do. Anyway, he's been telling me I need to sort it out. Then, about a week ago, uh, the newest exo booster, a guy owned by a guy called Ziggy, he had his into MK to sort out various problems that uh, manufacturers couldn't sort out. And one of the things they sorted out was the bump steer. It was on their weekly video, uh, which I always watch. And it's very clear it needed sorting. His was like mine was, mine, which it was way off. Um, and I'm starting to wonder whether it could be the cause of the understeer I get when I'm on track. Anyway, I'm out in the garage. Heat are running. It's bloody cold out here. Nice fresh cup of coffee. And I'm going to have a go at tackling this. It's not a job I've ever done before, so I'm not trying to pretend I'm an expert. You'll just follow me making my... If I make mistakes, hopefully you can learn from them. Uh, so let's get going. Right, bump steer. Now, from my understanding, it's basically caused by a mismatch of the steering arm and the suspension arms. So if these are not all got the same point of rotation, when the wheel goes up and down, the steering arm is going to pull in and out. It's also, they should be as far as possible parallel. Um, I think these two arms just go out slightly. I think that goes uphill slightly and that downhill slightly. I don't know how well that will come out in the video. But obviously the steering arm at the moment drops a considerable amount uh, the wheel's off the ground so it's not loaded which is going to kind of amplify it um, but the way Kev did his was where the rack is mounted here I'm not showing that very well this is the rack mounting he cut this down a bit MK they extended these up bit which is I suppose two different ways to get the same result um, now I'm not gonna say you know MK know far 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 more about this sort of thing than I do I asked them why they extended up because I'm in a big long bolt in there but their reasoning was was very clear is it's easier to shim that up to get it all correct than try and cut metal out of there so I think I might well go for a bit of a halfway house. I think I might cut those down. I guess if you cut those down too much, you can then shim it back up again. Maybe a way of doing it. Anyway, the first thing I've got to do is get the wheel on the ground so I can see, measure this angle here when it's all on the ground. Compare that to the chassis. So that's the front end back on the ground. You can see it's still slowed down a bit. Not anywhere near as much. Um, the back of the car is up in the air, so there will be a little more weight on the front end than there would normally be. But I think looking at getting that level is a start for 10. Um, Kevin did this the way that the sort of suspension book I've read says about, just to put a laser, get the wheel off, or well, I guess we shouldn't put it with the wheel on, uh, but basically you take the shock off so the uh, wheel can move up and down and have a laser and then just move it from one extreme to the other and in theory it should go up and down in a vertical line not an arc or any other weird pattern so using my chassis as a datum I've measured the angle that that is at when it's sat down using a little inclement inclinometer app on the phone of course I can't 
show you that because I'm using the phone to video and I can't do two things. Anyway, and then I've gone on that uh, arm. Um, so, that's where we are. Oh, and no, I misspelled chassis. Yeah. Great being uh, dyslexic. Okay, anyway, so it's 1.4 degrees, so it's obviously quite a bit different. Um, what I'm going to do before I start hacking any metal is I'll also do the laser testing as well. Just to demonstrate my ADHD uh, getting sidetracked thing again, I thought I'd just mention my new sticker. What do you reckon? I'm quite proud of that. Well, I'm not proud of the sticker. I'm very proud of the fact I built this car. So that's the shock undone. Uh, there we go. Tell you what it is, I don't like this. So one shock out. Uh, I think if I... What I've got is um, one of the things I make for carts are these little laser things that we use for setting up the front alignment on a cart. Now, obviously, it's a magnetic bottom. Obviously, that ain't going to work on a car. But it's got a nice little, uh, let's see, can you see that nice little lay, laser dot? So I think I just gaffer tape that, as long as it's firm and not going to move. Even better than gaffer tape, good old cable tyre. Anyway, so that's, that ain't moving, that's nice and firm on there. So with the laser shining there, just put a bit of alley that's waiting to be turned into a diffuser. Got a nice dot there so what I'm gonna do is just mark where the dot is then move the suspension up a bit mark 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 and see what shape we end up with uh, right okay so um, you can see those marks there I would ex I must admit I thought it'd end up with a curve but I've got a really heavy heavily sloped line there I don't have to uh, put a set square on that to see that's pulling right over which obviously any time then the suspension goes up and down that's going to be changing the toe in toe out yeah which might account for why I always seem to be getting a bit of understeer okay so I think that definitely tells me that this is not great but that's a good starter anyway so I'm now going to get this steering column out, a steering rack, sorry, out and trim these down a bit and see what difference it makes. Okay, so that's my steering rack out and on the bench. So these are the mounting points. Looks like my vernier has decided to pack in. Let's find a spare one. Let's have another go at that. Try doing it right and it would be easier. I haven't got the hang of this camera and thing. I'm oh, sorry about the background noise, by the way. That's a fan heater. It's bloody freezing out here. So. That there now is. 40, oh, about 46 mil. So I'm going to write that down. So I don't forget. 46 mil. Actually, looking at these again, they're pretty solid. Let's just go for the, the normal impatient. And I'm going to chop these down 20 mil and then I can space them up if I need to rather than taking it in and out, in and out, in and out. So I went for a halfway house in the end and took off about 15 mil. Um, I just Got that all nice and level. Bit of grease on there because it's not painted, although it's alley. Didn't do any harm. Greased up the ends as well to go back in. Let's put it back together and see what we've got. So that's everything racked back on and tightened up. The laser is on and I've just roughly lined it up with the last mark. Uh, the first mark, sorry. Oh. Let's see what happens. Well, that's a pretty dramatic change, isn't it? I would say that second line is fairly vertical. I've got a really big set square somewhere. I'll find that and see how vertical we are. But uh, that, well, 
that's just a million times better, isn't it? So it comes as no surprise to those of you who kind of follow this channel. I can't find my big set square, so I've used the Kleino app again. See, the original line goes off at 31 degrees from the horizontal. The new one goes off at 5 degrees. And I've just checked the chassis. The chassis is pretty well horizontal. So we've got a 5 degree deviation. Just thinking what to do with our... Cut that down a little bit more. Or... I mean, I've got a fair bit of thread under there. It's probably easier now to just go for a little bit of spacer here because if that was 15 mil so 15 mil off has made 25 degrees different um i want to make another five degrees so that's a fifth of that isn't it so a fifth of 15 is about three mil so that's like about a washer thickness isn't it uh let's just have a little look how difficult that would be so I've got plenty of thread on, on there, so it's not like I'm running out of thread. So would you believe it, out of these racks and racks I've got of nuts and bolts and washers, I can only find two at the right diameter. Uh, and that's 1.8mm thick, so it's not the 3mm I've just done my fag packet maths on, but... Be honest i'd probably be happy leaving it where it is but I'll, let's just stick that in and see what happens okay so putting that washer in has just given me that line uh, which is virtually exactly parallel where it was before so i think probably what i need to do is get the rack out again and go for a few mil more off the rack okay so there's my new line and it's six degrees the other way which is great. So that means I've taken a little bit too much off of the steering rack brackets. I took about four or five mil off that time. So if I put a little bit of spacer in, which I might just happen to have, because I did have these in here before, it should put me pretty well on. So there's the line there. Uh, let me just point to the finger there. That's now with those spacers in, and it's. 1.5 degrees off the of vertical and I'm more than happy with that that's absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned so I've gone from 31 degrees off the of vertical to 1.5 off the of vertical now whether that will sort out the um, understeer which I always assume was something to do with camber and caster uh, not caster sorry camber settings uh, I'll only find out, I suppose, when I actually finally manage to get this car out on track. We're now early March, um, and, and forecast man is saying we've got some kind of beast from the East Mark II coming along, so I guess that means no track action for a couple of weeks anyway. I've got a few bits and bobs left to do, but I'm, I'm happy with this. Obviously, I'll tighten all this lot up, and it'll be interesting to see... On track next time what happens so I just do my normal little end of uh, job caveat I am no expert on this in fact I'll go as I said at the beginning this is the first time I've ever done this I've read a suspension book I watched the video MK did the other week and I've had a good chat with my mate Kev who's the guy with the exo booster um, and I've just sort of followed it and used my common sense. I think I've got common sense. Yeah, I've got plenty of common sense. Um, and it seems to have worked. Like I say, the proof of the pudding will be when I drive the car on track, whether it understeers or not. We should see. So the usual old blah, blah, blah at the end with uh, YouTube videos. It makes a massive difference if you could subscribe and like these videos. Once I can get this up to, if I can get this up to a thousand subscribers, I then start getting some pennies from YouTube, which will help me. And as I mentioned, I've got mulling over in the back of my mind quite a big project that I want to start in the autumn. I will need some money coming in from YouTube to help fund that, because that will then help give me the time to be able to do the project rather than 
uh, having to do my day job all the time I'll be able to cut back on that a little bit and spend time out here doing a project anyway like and subscribe please see you later bye hi thanks for getting to the end of the video if you're not already subscribed please do so now just hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button and that way YouTube will tell you when there's any new videos. We've got some big plans ahead for the channel including possibly a car build from scratch so if you want to get involved with that now's the time to subscribe. Cheers then, bye!